Hi guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what we are up to today. So in today's video, I am bringing you some bread boxes. Well, a couple bread boxes and some of tins actually that I had run across um, a set at a garage sale and then I had run off, run across the same sort of one at the Salvation Artist. So in today's video, I need to get some bread boxes done and this is all I have and I'm out of them in our booth. So I am sharing the process with you all of what I'm doing to these bread boxes. Now, if you watched my thrift with me when we went up and picked that thrift haul up from a viewer, yes, I'm redoing that red set. And unfortunately, it was not in the best of shape. Once it got put into water to be cleaned, yes, yeah, stuff started chipping off. So here's the process of what I did to it, and I hope that I have done it justice. So stay tuned and see what I've done to these bread boxes. So I know the first bread box is definitely a bread box, and the other is a little recipe box that we got at a garage sale. Totally could not help myself. If I'm going to be taking apart boxes to paint them, I might as well throw this one in the mix. And these are just simple, just completely simple bread boxes. But I definitely know that I can take them to the next level with that roll top. I definitely need to take them, par them apart if I can to get the best paint job on this type. And they're definitely, you know... I I felt as if this is a pretty good price. If I can find them for 10 and under, I am extremely happy. Now, when I started this video, this bread box wasn't even in my thought process. <laughs> so if you ever want to say a God wink moment or this bread box, I just happened to be in the middle of this video and, and redoing these bread boxes. And here I went thrifting at a community thrift. And here were these two beautiful bread boxes. And I have to say, this one's the best one I've ever in the best condition I've ever flipped before. Now at first glance, when you all saw this one, you probably thought, yep, there it is. There's that red set we told Yvonne not to touch and leave it as is. But no, this is the one from the Salvation Army. What a funny little quinky dink this is. That, And if, as you can tell, yes, this one is actually a little bit bigger than the one that I had thrifted at the garage sale. So I'm super excited to make these over. I know that red is an up and coming color or we're in the season and then when it came to these canisters that matched that little thing yes I really in my heart wanted to keep them red but they did have some difficulties and I don't know if I can pan in on them enough but luckily the inside seemed to be very I mean there's some dirt in them but don't get me wrong but the insides seem to be pretty good on these so I am happy that I can leave the insides red and yes I know y'all I am going to paint over that red or attempt to it some of the handles have been dropped they need to be fixed yep we just have some issues so I'm going to start right off with, of course, you know, my <laughs> same old, same old of taking the tags off. And for me, the easiest way is to be able to paint all these pieces in parts separately. So after removing all the tags, and apparently they wanted you to know what the price of this one was. There's like three different tags on this. So that I'm going to take a rubber mallet, and yes, I'm just going to, see the third tag, <laughs> I'm going to hammer it apart. Especially on that bottom piece is that really shiny, I don't know what kind of board it is, but yes, you can actually tap these apart, and as long as I keep my pieces and parts together <laughs> hopefully Chris at the end will be able to put these back together Now that I got them all taken apart I'm going to go ahead and go back through and get all the little brad nails out of them So now I'm assessing this one. I'm like, hmm, how do I get this apart? Because as you see, it has a big crack down it. So there's not really a lot of hammering. I need to go ahead actually and take the back off of this first to get it to hammer apart 
because instead of like a hinge or anything, it just has a nail in, on either side of the door that opens and lets it open and close and then a little stopper at the top. So I just need to release all these little staples that are at the top so I can hammer this apart also. Now in my fight to get the back off, I damaged that thin wood a little bit, but it, 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 it happens. So I'm just taking a little bit of Star Bond glue to fix where I had chipped it. Sometimes you just do it while you're in the process of doing it and get this fixed. I'm just using that metal spatula just to help me make sure that I've got it laying down smooth. This is just that very, really thin board. As you see, it kind of just peels and all my finger was doing was sticking to it, but it seemed like rubbing on it helped a lot get that down. Now, if you want to try this at home, if you have a bread box that you would like to paint up or you're thrifted and you want to get done, make sure that you use a rubber mallet and not a regular hammer because the regular hammer will beat and leave marks in the wood. As you can see, the other than maybe a black spot here and there, it does not mark up the wood. Now, this bread box seems pretty easy because all I have to do is take the hinges off to separate it. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that knob. And then as I'm removing the knob, I'm like, oh, usually when I thrift these, that bread sign is glass. And it's more of a plastic plexiglass. So even though I still don't want to scratch it up or mar it up, you still have to be very gingerly when I'm, because I want to be able to reuse these tabs to put it back on after I paint it. So this is just a staple removing tool that's helped lifting it up. But I... <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I'm happy or sad that it was a plexiglass or not a glass, but I definitely, the stress of not breaking glass made me happy. So now this one definitely needs to be sanded. There's a lot of marks. I need to get quite a bit of the top coat that is coming off is quite deep. So I'm just using actually just a 220 sandpaper, nothing terribly rough. I just want to make sure that I'm getting a smooth surface i'm even out the prosody there's a lot as you can see as i'm sanding you'll really start to notice all those marks and scratches that are in, in this on the other bread box i'm going to do a scuff sanding they are shiny they have a top coat but i need to get some of that top coat off so i will know that the paint that i'm going to be painting on it has something to attach itself to So if you were wondering where this one was in the group, it was because I was like, hmm, when I started to look at this and started to figure out how or if I could take it apart, this is not my normal. This is a manufactured piece. A lot of times when I buy these, these are homemade pieces and they can withstand me beating them with a mallet. Now, this is a beautiful bread box. It's a nice solid bread box, but it's more of that MDF board than it is a solid, solid wood. <laughs> so I was a little leery on starting to hammer on it to take it apart. So I'm going to attempt for the first time to to try to paint this as it's all put together. Meaning I still want to be able to paint the inside and that roll top and make sure that it is still able to open and close. So wish me luck as I'm just scuff sanding the shiny off of this. So now on the one that said bread that had the big crack on it, I decided that I wanted to put it back together, the outside of the box back together, only because it has a ton of those nail holes that would be spackling in any way. And I really rather spackle them before painting it. A lot of times when that happens, I have to spackle after I've already painted it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and then these are just some corner clamps that's gonna keep it in place so I can brad nail it and make sure that it's nice and square. 
And then now I'll go in with some spackle that just was one of those knots in this pine wood that just probably over time, probably even when they put it together, it was together, but wood dries. And then this is what happens to it. So I'm just going in and filling that in. And any of the other little um, areas, this was kind of had some rough edges on it that I'm going to fill in also. Now I'm assessing these red there. Some of the handles had been dropped. And as you see, when it was dropped, it then there cracked the paint on there. So then I had to, I started to sand a little bit, trying to see if I could, um, yeah, plain and simply, <laughs> simply fix the handles a little bit. I know everybody said they were good with wonkiness, but as a reseller, yeah, there's just, there was a lot of wear, there was a lot of bubbling going on, meaning I knew that it was going to come off. So I just thought, okay, I, maybe I'll just do the rim. So I'll just repaint like at the bottom, I'll sand that off. I'll just get some of the bubbly off of it. And even the one I didn't get this on film that the bigger bread box I'm calling them because that's what I'm going to use them for and redo them as bread boxes as I'm scuff sanding away because I know I'm going to end up painting these the actually it came they were from Marshall's and then back to my yet again for some reason the rubber mallets my faithful friend in this video of a hammering the trying to fix the handles they're not something you can just bend they are strong enough <laughs> that i can't just bend them but i'm trying to hammer them back into a shape a rounded shape not the square of what they were dropped at so now to get these tins cleaned up i'm just doing dawn dish soap and then i had a viewer suggest when i'm doing metals or um, to use distilled vinegar. So I thought, why not throw that in the mix? So just some hot water and I'm just going to get all these all washed up. To get the rest of the bread boxes, uh, the pieces and parts of bread boxes cleaned up, I'm just using some super clean in some hot water just to wipe all of them down. Sanding a piece is not enough. That is not getting it clean by any means. That is just making your surface prepped and ready to go in one step. But the final step is to make sure that you get any grime, any dirt, anything that would prevent your paint from sticking off. So just nice and clean and then make sure that you let them thoroughly dry. Okay, here they all are. I'm going to be spraying them. So now I have them on our spraying boards. They're all ready to go. <laughs> Yes, I probably always make more work than most people think I should do. And I only have a little bit of hardware to deal with. But first, before spraying a color, I'm going to go in on a few of these that I know I'm going to have some bleed through problems and do a couple coats of shellac. When it comes to these older pieces, this older wood, however it is that they stain them, when they just sometimes will cause some problems when I want to paint them white or any lighter color, it will yellow them. And especially where there's these knots on these pine definitely cause some problems. And I don't care if it's the bottom of the piece. I want everything just to be as pretty, the whole piece to be as pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and spray some of these pieces up, especially when it comes to this very thin board. It'll just take the paint a little bit better if I give it a couple coats of the shellac. So I am going to leave the inside of these red. That'll be a nice little fun feature when somebody it takes off the lid. So I spent the time doing the two inch gel or general masking tape, making sure that it was good to adhere, that everything was sealed because spray, when you spray something, it's like water. It'll find its little hole anywhere to get through. So I am actually at the Menards that we go to the most, they have a whole farm equipment. And when it comes to metals, I don't mind doing metals, but when it comes to taking a lid off, on and off like a canister set or a bread box I want to make sure that it is good and on there so I've never tried the farming one 
So I thought, you know, I, this is going to be my underneath color anyway, and I'm going to definitely give it a day to dry in between before moving on to my next color. So, yeah, so I'm going to get, have you all tried this? And I, of course, I was showing with you, yes, please have your ventilated mask. And I switched over to the whole mask now um, I, cause, because I do do a lot of spraying. So, yes, when, you, when it comes to spraying, I'm probably rambling here, but do keep that bottle moving definitely have your hand going back and forth but constantly do not let that paint sit on there very long i'd rather go over multiple times than have too much paint and do runs and drips because when it comes to metal it is not very forgiving remember the paint on a metal item is just kind of hanging out there until it cures And yes, before I get a whole bunch of comments, yes, I do have one of the spray can handles, but this type of sprayer does not bother my hands. Now, when it comes to the polycrylic spray, sometimes it bothers if I'm doing a whole bunch of that. But for whatever reason, this does not hurt my finger. It does not hurt my hand. Maybe it's because of being a hairdresser for 31 years. And probably 20 years ago, I already had carpal tunnel surgery, but it does not hurt my hand, guys. But thank you for your concern. When it comes to spraying up the hardware, that farm one was probably a dollar fifty more than what your normal Rust Oleum spray paint is, even though we all know it's going up a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to switch over to my can of the regular Rust Oleum to spray these hinges. So as we talk about the spray cans going up, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the time and I am going to mix up my ready to use black onyx. I, this is still on our shelves at our local Walmart, so I'm still able to buy it. So instead of using the spray cans where I have, well, let's say I cheated because of timing, that I'm going to put this in a sprayer and spray my base coat of black. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people like, yes, Yvonne, finally. But it's just the ease of spraying it out of a spray can. So I'm making sure that I have it watered down. I'm going to be using my True Coat um, 360 Gray Coat Handheld Sprayer. I'm just making sure that my paint is not laying on top of the other paint. That way I know that it's watered down enough to go through the sprayer i don't know about you all but having the sprayer has been a blessing and watching it devour these pieces getting them painted up so fast having them on a turntable so i can turn and get any of the area that i missed in that first coat any of those little hidden areas but oh wow i definitely love as i'm editing i love watching um, all this just get devoured with paint and yeah, there's not an easy way to do these roll tops at all, but I kind of did stick a paint can in there thinking that would help. Well, yeah, it helps on the one side, but not the other side. Oh, well. Now, I cannot believe that I actually got this comment of, I can't believe you didn't say that in one of your videos, that the fun of doing a flat paint is, you know, when it's dry, it's not shiny anymore. So now I can move on to sealing that black in. That was such a cute comment. <laughs> After my Rust-Oleum clear coat is dry on the one side, I can flip these pieces over and I can paint the rest of the rest of the surface area that I not get it with the first coat.
and then when that flat is not shiny anymore i can go in and seal that side in with the clear coat also both sides are going to get sealed in clean my sprayer all out now i am doing the kills paint and primer in one in the flat white so yep i'm using the same sprayer but now if you wondered where this piece was when it came to the black this is already dark so it'll be okay but i definitely did not want to have to get too much paint on this since i'm not able to take this one apart so I'm just definitely going to make sure that I don't oversaturate and get too much paint. I'd rather go back and do multiple coats little by little than get so much paint on that that won't open and close on me anymore. So I'm starting off with this one on the open position trying to get that inside. Along with this piece also because really even though I added these into the beginning of the video for you all actually i was done painting black when i found these two pieces so it's just nice to share i like the way that the black undercoat takes so this is just a little bit different look so yes you don't always have to do the black you can also just do the white all depends on what the final look that you're going for is what i did not video on this piece for you that i did put two coats of shellac as you can see all that pine all those problem areas that were going to happen if i did not cover that up and seal that in with the shellac so now i'm going to go ahead and paint up my black painted pieces with the kills white when it comes to the white i try to stand way back i don't want to the white's going to take two coats anyway guys it's just never going to just cover up in one so i definitely just like to do that nice misting and as I always say, I rather not have to deal with drips or runs, so I rather do multiple coats. So now when it came to these metal, I did not seal that in with any Rust-Oleum clear coat. I did not. I did not. I just want to emphasize that. I have been having problems with that Rust-Oleum clear coat. That's why I really just wanted to use that Farm brand and test that out because a lot of times I've been getting this crinkling and so I thought, well, if I don't have to do one more step or one more layer of paint on these, um, especially with having to take a lid on and off, that would be a little bit better for these metal canisters type pieces. So yet again, nope, I did not seal that black in. I let them dry completely for 24 hours before moving on. And I am using the Kills Paint and Primer. So it has the primer in there. And I'm definitely going to let it, this will be one coat right now. And I'm going to let that sit for a day before going on to another coat. It's just the way that metals take and I, i've done like decorative pieces but now i can't say that i've ever done a canister set where you have to worry about taking that lid on and off all the time it being a daily use item so i definitely want to make sure that i'm doing this very gingerly that the paint doesn't come off when somebody's taking on and off a lid my first coat this is what it looks like it is still wet but I didn't, I'm not going for full coverage. I'd rather go little by little and then get the coverage as we're building up because metals do not forgive. They do not like to have drips or runs. You can always see them when they do that. So just a little bit of spray and then I will go back tomorrow the next day and spray them again. Then after my two coats of white are done on my wood items, I can flip them over and go ahead and do two more coats on the other side. Okay, now we're coming to this one. This is that. I'm like, I can't put too much paint on this. So I am going to go, I'm going to stand far away. I'm just really going to miss this roll top. That way there's just a little bit paint on there. I'm going to let that completely dry. That way I'm not trying to fill in any of these cracks by getting too much. And then I'm trying to keep it away from the bottom so that that bottom part's not... The, draw, the door and the bottom part aren't going to be stuck together pulling off the paint. So then this is coat number two. So I'm just sharing with you. I ended up actually doing three coats on this very lightly. And so after it was completely dry overnight, I'm going to go back in with an X-Acto knife before even trying to open the door up to make sure that any of the parts that did get painted shut are separated. 
and I definitely think that it's way worth my time. It was just a little extra effort, and let's see if oh, I can open it. I am very impressed that I can open it. I was a little bit on the worry side there, but nope, it opens and closes. Okay, so I have a little bit of a game plan. Even though I painted this one white and I painted it black first, I got this cranberry uh, fusion paint in to do um, a dresser touch up that I thought, you know what? I have a contact paper that I wanna put in the bottom of these. I love that red insert. I'm sorry that I could not keep them red. <sighs> so I thought, you know what? Why not try a red? Yeah, why not try this red box in red? Leave the inside white, but paint the outer red, and I will see how it goes as it sells. And this will give me a little bit more experience other than the dresser touch-up I did. I didn't, you couldn't really get the full effect of it, but I have never tried the Fusion Mineral paint, so this is a great opportunity to get it tested on a bread box. So now this is going on to coat two and red is kind of, I don't know, kind of like white and very seldom does it just cover in two coats, but we'll see how it goes on nice and smooth. I have no complaints there. So now I'm going to be moving on to my third coat of misting white on these. So now, so that my pieces of wood do not scrape off any of that paint that did not cure. I put some of that Dollar Tree contact paper underneath them, making sure my tape is still on there. But you can see the angles that I could not get from that position that these were in. So that way I flip these all over so I can get do one more light misting, which will be three total on these pieces. And then I'd let them sit one more time overnight. Now I'm going to go back in with polycrylic. And my polycrylic is going to be my go-to for metals because I've never had any problems with any crinkling happening with them. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a light misting on the entire piece. Letting it there again dry overnight before applying the second coat. So this was not a fast process, but I feel that this is a unique set and I really wanted to do it justice. So it's just time and I always have something else that I'm working on anyway. So now it's going to be the fun of sanding all these pieces and parts before having Chris put these back together. And yes, I want to try to sand in between all these little, this roll top area and making sure there's not, I want to make sure that everything stays free flowing. I just want to get any of that texture. As you see, some of them kind of were glued together by paint. Okay, so here it is, that contact paper that I was talking about. Now, on this one side of the the one of the bread boxes had that really shiny surface that I didn't even attempt to try to paint that I knew that I could stick some of this fun. It reminds me of that old picnic basket tablecloth <laughs> that you would have had back in the day, and I'm sure they still make it, but I absolutely love it. It's a Pioneer Woman contact paper, and I actually had bought two rolls of it to go with a dresser, yes, a dresser flip that I did that matched the rooster perfectly. So yes, and I didn't actually, there was a ton on a roll, so I still have quite a bit left. So why not? Why not have some of this fun contact paper in some of these bread boxes? Now I put the contact paper on this piece only because the way that this one slides in and out and how it was going to be 
um, on the bottom. So now Chris says he gets the fun task. And we have taken a lot of bread boxes over time uh, apart and back together. And sometimes you do have to go back and look at your same, your film to see, who how did that pieces and parts go? But I always give him credit because sometimes when you paint something, it does swell. So there might be a little bit of sanding that you have to go back in and do to kind of take it um, down a notch. I can't say that this is the easiest task, but whoever's putting them back together, you just walk away and let them do what they're doing to put them back because there's always those frustrating moments of, yes, as you can see, the inner, because it was unfinished and wasn't sanded well, needs to be sanded a little bit more where it slides in and out because, yep, it swelled a little bit. I'm just going to go in and sand just a little bit. I don't see a ton of brush marks when it comes to this paint, so I'm just going to sand off just to make sure that there's anything smooth. I'm not distressing this piece at all. I want to keep it the way that it is, and I just double checking my back that that's nice and clean and then I'm I can I'm going to go ahead and spray the white of the inside of this just as a protectant of these to make sure um, I'm not really sure about waxing. Um, if I go to wax the red, will the red get onto the white? So that's why I sealed that in with that white in with some polycrylic first. So now I'm just going to go in and give, I don't know, I didn't really know how to finish up um, the color fusion paint. <laughs> so yep, um, I do see that it, a little bit is coming off on my waxing, but that way at least I know that it's going to be sealed in and that it's there for longevity. Now my uh, wanting to keep the inside white may come together a little bit better here, especially since there's a window and I want you to be able to see this plaid and see how that paint matches up perfectly what a fun this is definitely out of the ginger chick character to do but i definitely think that it is super cute coming together so sometimes you just always have to trust your process now like i said this is a piece of plexiglass which is fine i'm just getting it cleaned off um with some of my norex cloths these are the target version that were on a clearance bin at my goodwill so yes it's nice to have an extra set on hand while you're washing the other set so do they work as good as the other sure they do so i'm just making sure that i think that i'm all centered um i think you know i didn't cover up my holes but i just definitely for me i wanted to ch double check my measurements and remember i was just reusing those plastic tabs and just staple gunning them down so some of the bread boxes had to be spackled where he nailed it in so there's going to be a little bit more painting to do over that spackling and now I'm just going in on this one and making sure that um, it's a little bit distressed. The paint's not going to cause any issues with this opening and closing. And then I'm going to sand this um, the surface area nice and smooth. And then I'll finish it up with some Varathane finishing wax on the outer shell. Because I'm still on the front of these, I'm still going to be doing some stenciling. But as I'm putting, and we're putting these back together, I'm just trying to get to the point where all I have left is to do the stenciling on them. Now, this just had little bitty nails that were keeping this as the hinging system, but Chris is drilling some new holes and he's going to use some black screws. So now when you paint something 
especially spray painted or anything paint runs and then you get that crusty edge so i am not going to try to clean up like paint it because that's where the lid is going to sit and the opening and closing so what i'm doing is i'm taking a 320 sandpaper a very sa fine sandpaper and i'm just sanding off that wee area where you get that dried crustiness of there and i'm trying not to take too much of the shine off of the original red i'm just trying to make the line as clean as i possibly can you're buying from a craft proof so you know the chances that i probably redid these are but i'm going to to try to do my best to make it a somewhat of a straight line now i'm just going to be stamping the word bread on this i'm not making any stencils or anything like that anything that takes the chance of pulling my paint off so i'm just going in and finding center and my only letters that i have in my stash that fit that space appropriately were my type setting um stamps from iod now if you see i made my own little design here of how to hold my stamps on so i used clear packing tape then i lined them up on my stamping mount to make sure that they were lined up and that way i can visually see where i'm going to be stamping and then i'm stamping on a round object so that again that way it will go around the round object and i did kind of fold over the sides of the tape so i had handles to hold onto without sticking to them so now i'm just down here where you're watching all my hair in the video sorry measuring and making sure that i'm just placing some tape so i know where my center point is when i get it all inked up i know where i am ready and committed to lay that stamp down when it's inked. Okay, I'm just using IOD stamp on my stays on ink pad and now, yep, I have to be committed. I've got it close enough. I'm not going to lift my hand off. I'm always going to kind of be holding it with one hand, gently tap it down, and then I'll individually rub on each letter very, very gingerly as not to have it slide. So now I'm going to be doing the exact same thing for the canister sets, just using coffee, tea, sugar. I measured with tape. It's a Dollar Tree masking tape. I just gingerly have it. I didn't press it down hard. It's still trying to find a center point. There's actually a seam on the back of these canisters, so I'm going with that guideline. But of course, coffee has double letters in it, so I'm just going with the COFF first. I got my tape, I've got my measurements. I know that this F is the middle point, so I know to put that in the middle. And then I will go a one by one, doing the next F and the E, and then doing the other E separately. Even though this ink is permanent, I want to give it one misting over the lettering that I just put on there to make sure that it's good and on. And being careful to spray low not to get inside the canister. So, but now I can go to my Cricut. I can pick a font that I like. I can do whatever wording I want on each one of these bread boxes. So if you peer over here, it'll tell you what font that I used. Oh my gosh, is there so many different fonts <laughs> that you can use. It's just fun to play. I took my measurements of the size that I wanted to fill, and that's how I guesstimated what I wanted. Then I tried to remember to count slats so I knew where I was centered, but I also wanted to be pleasing to the eye also. So the one thing when you're doing a slatted area like this, just press that vinyl down as best as you can. I do take my fingernail a little bit in the creases, but it's not going to be full coverage. You are going to have unpainted. You don't want to try to fit it into in between those slats because you're just going to get a blobbed mess. So now I'm just going to release my transfer tape and leave the stencil behind. I just wanted to note that, that this isn't going to be a full coverage kind of thing you're going to get the gist of what your lettering is and it's okay it, it's it is what it is so now i'm going to be doing the stencil color in black but i'm going to be pre-doing the base color of the white kills because of the slats that's just going to helpfully 
help with the crisper of lines that it fills in with the white and that fills in with the black to, to make that kind of blo blobby mess. This does help a little bit. So after I get all the white on, I'm going to go ahead and get that dry. So that, while that one's drying, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next one and put, this one's a little bit more of a swirly, the stencil area is much thinner, so I'm just eyeballing my placement here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that exact same thing with that Kills Paint. And if you notice the masking tape, I like to cut my stencil, my vinyl, as close as I can to the image. That way, when I'm going to center, I really can get a feel for where it is centered. And I really thought that I was going to, I measured for the storage to go on the roll part of it, but I just, I didn't like it. But so that I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this is the same size as that flat area. And yes, it was. So that is where it's going to go. So now I'll just go back in with that Apple Barrel, the multi-use in black, and now I'll complete the color. Now I am choosing just to do the dabbing technique with the makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store just little by little and unfortunately my little makeup square tipped off to the side so I have to apply it a little bit differently. All I can suggest while you're doing these, don't worry about those slats. Just put it on. Don't try to squeeze it in between those slats of wood. And then now to remove my stencil, I'll go ahead and use the assistance of the blow dryer to heat up this tape and the vinyl itself. So that way it is just releasing that sticky and not accidentally pulling off my paint as it's dry, but it's not completely cured yet. And then I'll use a needle going in very gingerly between the slats to get off those little bitty pieces and parts that are left over. Then I have a little bit more cricketing to do. The one I felt was a little high and it had a little bit empty space. So I went, out, went ahead and made this also to put at the bottom of the bread. And then for the other two ones that I added in, this is what I chose to come up with. They are just things that I typed up and these are the fonts that I used. Now to finish up all my bread boxes, I'll be sealing the stencil itself in with a clear coat polycrylic and then let that dry and then since i had not waxed any of where i put the stencil i will go ahead and wax over that after i lightly sand so there's no texture left behind from the clear coat
okay, okay, what did you think? I know, I when I showed those bread, that set of bread, everybody was like, oh, I want it as is, leave it as is. And I suppose, I sometimes I think I should do more of a close-up version with the rust and then after you wash it and things happen to you. There's a reason that I would like it that somebody's just tired of it, getting rid of it, but there's usually a reason that it is um, for sale. So I hope that I've done it justice. I hope, I love that I was able to leave the inside red. So there's your little pop of red and then that red bed box. Yeah, that's why I don't, I have such a hard time ordering paints online because you can't, I can't really tell the color of paints online. So that cranberry was definitely not the red I was looking for. And I don't know, I can't really, I should have known cranberry is a little bit more burgundy, but it, it is what it is. That's why I'm just such a touch and feel and thank goodness I had picked up that Waverly chalk paint. Um, for in case I was going to do anything from Christmas at Walmart. So there you go. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at a thrift store found items in a new way. And like always, give me a quick like if you like this kind of content and it, whatever one was your favorite piece today. And I know I made some people sad about painting over that red. That's just, it, it, it was what it was. It is what it is. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if you're new and checking out our channel for the first time and you like this kind of content, hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And I'll see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye.